Comping in shuffle land. You know, folks, uh, it is something that I've always thought was extraordinarily important to be able to groove like a banshee in heat with the rhythm guitar, because unless you have the groove and the swing going, all the schweedle schweedles in the world doesn't make a load of difference as far as I'm concerned. So, and one of the things that really helped me quite a bit was, I mean, I always uh, worked on my rhythm quite a bit. Um, I've played in my own version of bands with having a keyboard player in the band where I'm comping for them, but when I started doing a duo with this, uh, there's a harmonica player back home by the name of Steve Cohen, he's unbelievable on the harmonica, and we would do these duos together, and he played guitar as well, so he would comp on the guitar as I was doing solos, and then when he was soloing on the harp, I would be comping. And so, learning the skill set of knowing how to comp in a trio uh, is one thing, knowing how to comp in a, a band when you're uh, having to support somebody but not step all over their activities and, and comp, you know, compliment what they're doing, but then also being able to play in a situation where you're playing like solo guitar where you gotta keep the groove going um, is another thing. So there's an idea of, um, I wanted to kind of express how to be able to comp like that or at least how I approach it um, the, the tune that we're actually going to use for this is a tune of mine called uh, Quarantun, which is a whole other subject matter. But it's a, basically a shuffle in E, uh, and there's a bunch of different stuff that I'll do when I'm doing a shuffle. Um, you know, one of the things, obviously you can just kind of go, and that works just, just dandy. I've got a little bit of paste on this tone just for a little bit of girth and majesty. Uh, but one of the things I just like of just doing a straight rhythm is this idea of all downstrokes, one, two, three, e, four, and then doing an upstroke. Okay, that idea of the is kind of a cool thing. It's kind of like the Stevie Ray. It's the idea of having the, those upstrokes. Do it slow, it kind of sounds weird, but. Okay. A lot of times I'll add in extra like Robert Johnson-y type of stuff like. That wasn't supposed to be in there. But you get the idea. That's kind of my, one of my favorite little turn out, turnarounds to do. Okay. So, and sometimes I'll do things where I'll actually like, you know, do stuff on top like. So all of that stuff kind of is in the soup 
So depending on whether I'm playing with a band or playing by my lonesome or maybe just me and another person, I'll add in or take out any of that stuff for the appropriate circumstance. Uh, but it, what's fun about it is, is that you're, it's a whole other level of improvising. You're improvising with rhythm. But the groove has always got to be there. Uh, and you got to know when to pop it in in the appropriate place and when to just kind of dig in. I mean, there's nothing better than just kind of digging. <laughs> Okay, as long as we're kind of talking about comping, uh, I've done this kind of shuffle in E and showing you the various different aspects of what I might do. And I've done it more of a kind of in a, and more of a kind of a grungier Chicago type or Texas style blues type of a thing. <laughs> if I'm doing something where I'm doing a shuffle in G and maybe doing it more of like a solo thing, I'm just sitting by myself, I'm tapping my foot doing a shuffle in G. It might sound something like this. Now obviously that gets pretty noty there, but that's if I'm playing all by my lonesome and I just want to keep a groove going and keep things interesting, I'll add uh, some kind of chordal lead content in there. And I'm kind of doing a bunch, of, you see my thumb kind of lurking every now and again. A lot of times what's going on with my left hand looks more mutated than it actually is. I played this G13, but I do it like this and it looks weird, I don't know why. Hendrix always used his thumb and I always thought it looked cool. <laughs> So a lot of times, what this chord is, I'll do like this and it looks weird. Uh, but if I'll kind of start off, little slides up, or like little, and sometimes I'll do a blues scale and I'll harmonize it with chord shapes. I learned that from Robin Ford. Thank you, Robin. Hit that chord, which is a C sharp nine with a raised fifth, or flatted fifth, or raised 11, sorry. To the C nine, a lot of times I like to do this little, just kind of a nice little, sometimes I'll go minor by just, I'm down to F 13, F sharp 13, back to G 13, and then you can go. Now here we can do two fives in a number of different ways. One of the ways I'll do on the shuffle tune is a little different. Uh, I can do it like either like on the shuffle tune where I'm ending with that sus chord to this. It's like an A flat over D, right? Then you go. A nice little raise 11th chord again or flat five. But sometimes I'll do this. I just like that thing, I think it's wise ass and cool. So I'll go down. I'll 
I'll take anything and use it as a diminished thing. So that little seventy thing. And then if I go up to G, I'm kind of just going down minor third. Okay. This little walk up I do all the time. Little shell voicings. To So I'll throw a diminish in there. Add Mr. Wiggles, as I like to call it, just kind of shaking it back. Do that hammer on. Anyway, some additional shuffle courting malfeasance for you. That's a lot for your hard-earned dollar. Am I right or am I right? Shuffle time, let's get it. 